Hi there, and good evening. My name is Scott Chamberlain, and I'm the Executive Director of the San Gabriel Valley Consortium on Homelessness. Uh, we exist to educate communities and advocate for more housing and services in the San Gabriel Valley. We come here together today. It's a time of great unrest and also great change. In reaction to the murders of Ahmaud Aubrey and George Floyd and Breonna Taylor, tens of thousands of people across the country have taken to the streets to protest police violence that have killed 236 black men and women last year alone. In addition to being disproportionate victims of police brutality, systematic racism make our black neighbors much more likely to experience homelessness. Tonight, you're gonna to hear from political leaders and service providers and from folks who have experienced homelessness and are chartering new beginnings. When we listen to their stories, we can all get a better understanding of the pressures that tens of thousands of people are facing in the San Gabriel Valley, as well as across LA County, and to better understand the range of resources and services that are part of helping all of our neighbors thrive. Tonight, you'll take a look at, towards the future, recognizing that we need to continue what we need to continue to do to build a better community where everyone is in. Uh, we are so grateful for the support of so many people to make this evening possible. I wanted to start uh, by thanking our partners in the community who are tackling homelessness head on. Thank you to the San Gabriel Valley Consortium on Homelessness, Heart of Compassion, Foothills Kitchen, Corporation for Supportive Housing, Volunteers of America, Pomona, uh, Project Room Key, and everyone's in San Gabriel Valley organizers, Teresa Eilers, Allison Henry, and Beatrice Sandoval, and stories from the front line. Now, I am honored to be able to welcome our first speaker. Through the Corporation of Supportive Housing, Dorothy Edwards is a CSH Speak Up advocate. CSH Speak Up supports developing skills for people to reclaim their lived experience stories as messages of hope to create change with a curriculum that empowers supportive housing residents to become community leaders. Support, what well, you might ask, what is supportive housing? Well, it's actually quite simple. Supportive housing is housing equipped with services on site, such as healthcare and job training that help people to get back on their feet to pursue meaningful and fulfilling lives. When we say homes and homelessness, we are often referring to supportive housing because housing can transform lives. And so would you please welcome your neighbor, Dorothy Edwards. Um, my story is a long story. I've been I was experiencing homelessness most of my life, uh, the last time seven years here in the city of Pasadena. I slept on rooftops, I hid from the police, I hid from everybody. Um, my life was always in danger out there. Uh, I was a really bad, strung out on drugs. I had a 40 year addiction and um, I never thought anything would change in my lifetime, never. And I certainly didn't think anybody would come to help me because I certainly wasn't looking for help myself, for myself. So one night I was sleeping at the Goodwill on a couch and they, a group of people pulled up in the driveway and they were doing a, a point in time count and they interviewed me and I was deemed one of the most likely to die on the streets within a year if I was left out there. To me, that was the biggest wake up call in the whole world. I, I don't wanna die. I don't wanna die, I wanna live, I wanna have a life, I wanna be something besides a drug addict. That was all that ever used to run through my mind. So um, um, in, in comes Sean Morrissey, he was my case manager and at first I hid from Housing Works, the agency that housed me, because I didn't know who they were and I thought they were stalking me because that was just my drug addiction, my mental illness, my fears. Uh, when they finally caught up with me, they told me, oh no, you don't understand, we have a house for you. We have a home. And I'm like, yeah, right, show me. And they did. <laughs> and I've lived here eight years. You know, coming from the lifestyle that I had, it, it's just a 360 degree turnaround. And I, I attribute that to Housing First Model and Harm Reduction, where I was met with um, 
care and concern and genuine humanity towards me and what I wanted my life to be. Um, Sean Morris, he met me where I was at. Uh, he, he offered me something that I had always wanted and that was recovery and a life and a life of giving back and being clean and, and not, not destroying myself and everybody around me. You know, I don't have to live like that today. So um, I want to thank you for coming. Push forward for housing because not everybody is a bad person out there. That's somebody's sister, somebody's brother, somebody's mother, somebody's dad. It's important to know that it could be somebody in your family that needs help. So um, my name is Dorothy and thank you for coming to my home. I am your neighbor. Thank you, Dorothy, for sharing your story with us. The last few weeks, we've seen cities begin to reopen after months closed to reduce the impact of COVID-19. As we look towards the future, we are sobered by the challenges facing our community. As of May 9, 2020, nearly 600,000 workers in Los Angeles County have lost their jobs and have no unemployment insurance or other income replacement. An estimated 558,000 children living households very unlikely to be able to pay rent, and nearly all of those tenants who are unable to pay rent will face eviction. The economic difficulties have also disproportionately affected our black neighbors, as 25% of black families in LA County are doing they can to prevent this. Volunteers of America Pomona works to prevent homelessness through the range of supportive services, including eviction prevention, emergency services, and transitional and permanent affordable housing. And this even includes Hope for Home in Pomona, which is a shelter that offers crisis and supportive housing services. Our next speaker, Rolando Lubson, is a case coordinator and life skills specialist at VOA. Would you please welcome Rolando Lubson. My family and I migrated from Central America to North America. We know full well what it felt like to be ostracized and looked down on because we were somewhat different. Our family was not aware of the many community and health resources for medical and housing assistance as a product of how we were treated. My family and I do our best to raise people's awareness on various resources accessible to those in our low income community. So now the real meat of this discussion is, I came into the helping field in 2008. My role began as a street outreach worker, job developer, and later life skills specialist for the Volunteers of America. In this capacity, I was privileged to come alongside the fractured and power lift them up from the pit to the palace, the curb to the crib, and from the hood to the hill, help them get housing. I have also served in various capacities as a housing specialist, housing navigator, and client advocate. I am blessed to be co-contracted with the city of Pomona and Volunteers of America. Along with two other supervisors, I helped to oversee the permanent supportive housing program by developing a curriculum for VOA's life skills support group. What well, does further move me to encourage, motivate, and inspire the population I serve has been my four family members who became homeless due to severe mental illness identity theft, drug addiction, and an employment dispute. What really impacted the core reason of why I am an attentive advocate was that my extremely intelligent twin brother was repeatedly kicked out of high school calculation classes with teachers not quite understanding how to mentor him and his mathematic skills he gravitated to the streets and became highly skilled at selling drugs throughout Central America. As a result of his misdirected actions, he was arrested, 
and came in contact with the criminal system. He served 13 years in prison and when released, was deported back to Central America. That experience opened up both our eyes to yet other resources for those who are incarcerated with immigration issues. As a premeditated choice, I made a consciously calculated, deliberate decision to come alongside those on the sideline to offer hope and encouragement. My life mission is to be of service, pay forward the contagious kindness that was so freely given to me, and lift up those who have been knocked down. My name is Rolando Lumsden, and I am your neighbor. Thank you, Rolando, for sharing your story and your heart. Thanks for your service for others. Our next speaker, Linwood Davis, was introduced to us by Rolando. They met on the job, and Linwood might say that that friendship changed his life forever. Would you please welcome your neighbor, Linwood Davis? My name is Linwood Davis. Um, I'm formerly a homeless person. I was on the streets for about two days, in fact. Uh, What happened was my parents passed away. I was taking care of my father for about a good 10 years. And when he died, um, I had to sell the house because it was under reverse mortgage. During that time, I had uh, assets and profit from the house. And I lived on that uh, from October 2016 until October 2018. At that time, the money ran out, and I stayed with friends for a bit. Um, They watched over me. They took good care of me, but I couldn't stay with them forever. I had to go on, and so I ended up being on the streets for two days until I found uh, Pomona, uh, the Pomona Armory, Uh, and I was fortunate enough to have a friend take me over there to get me into the armory. I was there until December of uh, 2018, where we then came over to a place called Hope for Homes, which was a program to help the homeless get housing. So I was in that program for a year and a half, uh, acquiring skills, uh, financial needs, and things while I got myself back together. Uh, So during that time, I learned the skills that I needed to cope out in the uh, larger society. I I was fine. I learned what I needed to learn. I was able to get a voucher to the apartment where I am now. And so that was very good. I was very pleased to get that voucher. And so now I'm on my own, uh, living my life as fully as possible. Uh, I'm 64 years, 63 years old. I'll be 64 in October. And so it has been a wonderful experience, Hope for Homes, to get me where I am. It shows that the homeless people out there, we can be a success. We are a microcosm of a society. And all we need for us is a hand up, not a hand out. That's what we need. We need help from people like yourselves. So do all that you can for us. We are very appreciative. And I am happy now in this apartment for the past two months, living my life fully as possible. So think anytime you see a homeless person, remember that homeless person is your fellow human and he is your neighbor. So I thank you very much. My name is Linwood Davis, and I am your neighbor. Thank you, Linwood, for sharing your story of perseverance and of courage. So wonderful. Well, the COVID-19 pandemic has highlighted the need for immediate safe housing for our neighbors experiencing homelessness, particularly those that are high risk, such as seniors. Last year, senior homelessness in LA County increased by 20% leaving many seniors in need of rapid shelter as COVID-19 began impacting the area. 
Project Room Key is a statewide mandate that temporarily houses our vulnerable neighbors during the COVID-19 pandemic in hotels. It provides unhoused people with safe places to self-quarantine and helps prevent the spread of COVID-19, protecting individuals and the capacity of our healthcare system. This additional housing means 37% of seniors experiencing homelessness now have access to shelter. Our next speaker, John Velasco, is a current resident of Project Room Key in Monterey Park. John is also the vice president and a board member of Heart of Compassion, a 100% volunteer organization that provides food and services to people in need. Would you please welcome your neighbor, John Velasco. Hello, I'm John Velasco. I'm the vice president of Heart of Compassion, a food bank located in Montebello, California. Uh, I have worked in homelessness issues because of the food bank. Our motto is fighting hunger and feeding hope. And that is something that's very important to people who are homeless. They need to know that there still is hope. They need to know that there's a way to get out of their homelessness. And I know LASA and especially the County of Los Angeles have been doing a lot to address the homeless issue. As Vice President of Heart of Compassion, uh, I've been able to work with LASA, with uh, LA County Supervisor Hilda Solis and her staff, uh, and also with State Senator Bob Archuleta and his staff, and even our um, local assembly member, Christina Garcia, and her staff, and about five or six of the local cities uh, surrounding Heart of Compassion, and of course, the city of Montebello where we're located. I am a college graduate. I also am one of your homeless or unsheltered neighbors. Uh, I um, graduated from Pepperdine University I have worked for three presidents. I've worked uh, during two transition teams of the outgoing presidency to the new one. Uh, I've been involved on state and local political issues. And yet, because of bad investments and some medical issues, I became homeless. I presently am a resident of the state and LA County Project Room Key, which puts uh, formerly homeless people in hotels where um, in they can partake in wraparound services if needed. In my case, I don't need any of the wraparound services, but I do, do and did need a stable place to live. Without Project Room Key, I would be unable to function at the high level I do as Vice President of Heart of Compassion's Food Bank. One thing that I've been involved directly is helping to shape the homeless uh, programs for the city of Montebello and the city of Norwalk. And during the discussions with other community members in both those cities, I realized that NIMBYism, Not Your Backyard, is rampant in those two cities and also another city I'm involved in, the Downey Clergy Council, the city of Downey. And a lot of that, I figure, is due to maybe ignorance, not understanding a lot of the homeless issues. You know, homeless people are not all the same. We're all different, just like any other citizens of any community. But in the past, there have been negative stereotypes that have led to the NIMBYism. I'm glad I have this opportunity to tell you a little bit about my case and realize that I'm one of those homeless neighbors of yours. And I'm glad I'm getting the help so that I can do what I can to help people during this pandemic crisis. 
Right now, I'm probably economically the poorest I've ever been in my life, but yet because of what I get to do for the community through Heart of Compassion, I consider myself probably the richest I've ever been. And what it allows me to do is take the focus off my own circumstances and just push through because I know I have the opportunity and the skill set to help others. So thank you for the opportunity to share today. I um, am John Velasco and I am your neighbor. Thank you, John. So glad that you're my neighbor. United Way, through its Everyone In campaign, aims to help end homelessness and achieve housing justice. That means fighting for rent and mortgage forgiveness to help people keep their homes, making sure that the bans on eviction hold so that people have time to get on their feet and ultimately make sure that everyone has a home that they can afford. It means changing housing policy and zoning laws that keep black families out of certain neighborhoods, and it means challenging our neighbors who say that they don't want to change the character of their neighborhoods uh, to think about what they're really saying. Action means helping to organize communities that have historically not been organized. Now it's my great pleasure to introduce Teresa Eilers. Teresa is the West San Gabriel Valley organizer with the Everyone In campaign. She's been a community organizer for over 10 years. Would you please welcome Teresa Eilers? My name is Teresa Eilers and I'm an organizer with the United Way's Everyone In campaign in the West San Gabriel Valley. I'm from South Pasadena and I currently live in Rosemead. I love to spend my personal time outside gardening and I also really enjoy painting. I've been working in community and political organizing for 10 years in LA County. Each policy or political victory I have been a part of keeps me going to advocate for change. Lately, I've spent most of my time supporting Project Room Key. Project Room Key is a Win, win, win. It's a win for public health, a win for cities who need funding for homelessness, and it is a win for people who need housing. However, a lot of people don't view Project Room Key that way. There have been mass protests against people who are homeless here in the San Gabriel Valley. And it soon became really personal for me when these protests came to my city of Rosemead. I live on the same street where Rosemead's Project Room Key is located, and I am so happy that it's here. But I was so frustrated that people in my city would choose to stand in the way of housing people who are homeless. The pressure built up, and the city council was planning on voting to oppose Project Room Key. Usually, organizing campaigns take months or years, but I found myself in a situation where in one week the city of Rosemead was going to vote to block Project Room Key, and so I had to act fast. My first step was to prove that Rosemead residents supported Project Room Key. I started locally, really local. I talked to my neighbors and my landlady, and I asked them to email their council members. I also emailed the council members and requested to speak with them. A couple of days passed and I didn't hear back, so I decided to take our advocacy to the next level. I called the council members at their jobs. Uh, Keep in mind that most city council members still have full-time jobs and are just part-time elected officials. Desperate times called for desperate measures. The council members did not appreciate being called at work, to say the least, and they made sure to call me back and let me know that personally. One awkward conversation resulted in a really meaningful conversation about homelessness and Project Room Key, which I am so grateful for, and ultimately a personal invitation to visit Rosemead's Project Room Key site with the council members. Leading up to the council meeting, we continued to organize. We reached out to individuals and organizations throughout the San Gabriel Valley, asking them to submit public comment to the Rosemead City Council. Ultimately, we got 15 public comments in support of Project Room Key in Rosemead. 15 letters for a small city makes a really big difference, and it worked. The council ultimately voted four to one to support Project Room Key, and I was ecstatic. 
that night I celebrated our victory and then I got to rest. As an organizer with the Every Winning Campaign, each of my weeks is full of advocating for the homeless and homeless housing. Homelessness is symbolic of all of our societal ills. Homelessness shows us that systemic racism is real, that we need more medical and mental health care, and that the cost of living is too high. I invite you to join us in organizing for change because when we unite together, we win. My name is Teresa and I'm your neighbor. Thank you, Teresa, for your advocacy to help others. Art in all forms is a universal connector. It crosses boundaries, it tells stories, and it brings people together. That's why Everyone In Stories from the Front Line always includes some form of music or poetry. I'm thrilled to welcome to the stage Frank Reeder, John Douglas, and Paul Livingston, a group of songwriters and musicians from the west coast of Scotland who've been writing songs and playing music together for over 30 years. This group has a strong following to Southern California, as well as a personal connection to this area, with Frank having moved to Pasadena around 12 years ago, and Paul having spent nearly 10 years in West Hollywood. Would you please welcome Frank, John, and Paul. I discover the wheel and I watch the buildings go by You talk a little soft to turn off the radio I just want to hear all the pastime The rushed hours and the endless lies don't become a burden, say the word and be free. And you will find a great weight lifting, easing your mind, a great weight Leave it behind A great weight lifting And you will find A great weight lifting It's been a long Hibernating away. You need a little sunlight on that face. How long can you stay in the darkness and dust around the emptiness? You could make your way out. Thank you so much. That was truly beautiful. 
Hilda Solis is a lifetime resident of the San Gabriel Valley who has served in the State Assembly, State Senate, and in the House of Representatives. Prior to becoming supervisor, she served as the Secretary of Labor under President Obama and was the first Latina to ever serve in the presidential cabinet. Today, Supervisor Solis represents the San Gabriel Valley, Northeast, Southeast, and East LA on the Board of Supervisors. Would you please welcome Supervisor Hilda Solis. At this very moment, tens of thousands of individuals and families in Los Angeles County are experiencing homelessness. They're sleeping in their car, in a shelter, or on the street. They are women, children, veterans, and members of our communities. The COVID-19 pandemic has increased housing instability for even more county residents with rising unemployment, increased food insecurity, and growing health care needs. As an elected official representing the 1st District, I have been working to find solutions to homelessness by building the capacity of our community-based organizations, engaging our local cities and residents, and identifying land and resources to create more shelter and more affordable housing. And I am thankful for Gavin Newsom's Project Room Key initiative, which has enabled the county and our homeless service providers to bring thousands of individuals experiencing homelessness indoors in a matter of weeks. Because of the health risks associated with COVID-19, our immediate focus is on housing older adults and vulnerable individuals with underlying health conditions. Our county departments are working with the Los Angeles Homeless Services Authority and other providers to ensure that each individual has access to all the services and supports available to them. The challenge before is to help every Project Room Key resident on a path to permanent housing. Whether it's permanent supportive housing, rapid rehousing, family reunification, recuperative care, or another safe interim housing placement, the county is committed to finding a housing placement for Project Room Key participants and make sure that no one returns to the streets. Housing for our unhoused neighbors continues to be a priority for me. I believe it's our responsibility to strengthen and expand the safety net and support system for our most vulnerable populations, especially people experiencing homelessness. I am Supervisor Hilda Solis and I'm your neighbor. Soy la Supervisora Hilda Solis y yo soy tu vecina. Thank you so much, Supervisor Solis, for your leadership and your passion by which you serve. Uh, an estimated 2 million of our neighbors in LA County many of whom are experiencing homelessness, live with food insecurity. They're unsure on how they will afford their next meal. And according to the USDA, food insecurity rates are higher for people of color and are higher in general in large metropolitan areas like Los Angeles County. Foothills Kitchen, founded in 2014, is a program that provides meals to those who are experiencing homelessness four days a week in Monrovia. Today, we are joined by one of the founders of Foothills Kitchen, Carol Daly. In addition to her work at Foothills, Carol also founded the Monrovia Housing and Tenant Advocates Organization to provide the community with affordable housing and is working on a safe parking program, the first of its kind in the San Gabriel Valley. Would you please welcome Carol Daly? For the past six years, we've been welcoming guests into our dining room where people can come in, relax, have a good meal, and be free of life's hassles. Before COVID, we were serving 35 to 45 people every Saturday. Over the years, we've served thousands of people with hundreds of volunteers that have come forward from over 26 different churches. We try to build community and get to know each other by not only serving our delicious meal, but also asking our guests what are some of their needs and connecting them to services, such things as jobs, coats, toothpaste, sleeping bags, shoes, whatever they may ask for, we try and get. Now during COVID, we're one of the few places that serves a meal Serving on Saturday between 1 o'clock and 1.30, we serve a takeaway meal. In mid-March, we had about 38 guests that showed up. But after three and a half months, last week we had 75 guests that showed up for a meal. At the riverbed, 95% of the people are 
are living on the street, actually living under a bush or in their vehicles, and they're always hungry. Within a short amount of time, volunteers step forward to become 19 different teams of volunteers serving a meal. Some of the teams were groups from churches, but most were individuals that just wanted to help in some way. Each team would prepare a meal with drinks and a dessert and serve around 11 in the morning. With county money that came in through Measure H and support from supervisors like Hilda Solis, our kitchen advocated for our neighbors living in the riverbed and we were able to get the Showers of Hope to come out once a week, two big trash bins, which were very necessary, and two porta potties that are now giving access to toilets 24 seven, and many other county and private organizations coming out to help our neighbors in need. Such services as Union Station, LASA, Public Health, Mental Health, uh, social services, free telephones, and even sometimes free haircuts. These are huge blessings to the people that live in the riverbed. Long story short, we have 14 teams still preparing meals that Mater Della Rosa provides. We are serving 150 meals a day, seven days a week, 365 days of the year. As Teresa mentioned, we've seen fewer people at the riverbed due to people being placed in Project Room Key, and we're really grateful for that. I am Carol Daly, and I am your neighbor. Thanks, Carol, so much for your long-term example of compassion and service in the San Gabriel Valley. I want to thank everybody who's spoken today and give an additional special note of thanks to our partners that helped to participate tonight. San Gabriel Valley Consortium, Hearts of Compassion, Foothills Kitchen, Corporation for Supportive Housing, uh, Volunteers of America, Pomona, everyone in, organizers in the San Gabriel Valley, Teresa Eilers, Allison Henry and Beatrice Sandoval, and Stories from the Front Line. You know, with a disproportionate number of black neighbors living without housing, it's clear that fighting structural racism and ending homelessness go hand in hand. Across LA County, black people make up 8% of the general population, but 34% of the population currently experiencing homelessness. As we continue to work towards a future of housing for all, we must also stand against police brutality and stand with our black neighbors in demanding that public resources be used for the good of the community and public health. We must use this crisis and the recent energy around it as an opportunity to build momentum and to support for affordable and supportive housing in our communities, both to combat structural racism and to end homelessness once and for all. In these unprecedented times, it's important that we remember to be good neighbors you know, check on your seniors uh, that are nearby in your neighborhood to make sure that they're getting food daily. Uh, educate ourselves on systematic racism and consider consider ways, you know, that I might we might be even complicit. Uh, wear masks and wash your hands frequently to keep yourselves and neighbors safe. To get better educated, would you consider joining the Everyone In community calls to discuss what we can all do? and to learn more about local homelessness and the COVID-19 response. Whether it's attending a virtual training or attending an everyone's in community call, getting active on social media or attending a protest, we can ensure that the San Gabriel Valley and all of our neighbors have safe places and communities in which to live. We can emerge from this crisis in this moment, a stronger city together we can rebuild a city where everyone is in and everyone has a home. My name is Scott and I am your neighbor.